This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Warminster. Let us begin our worship with the sounding of the chimes. Grace to you and peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Warminster. Our virtual worship will continue at least through the end of May as our building remains closed to worship and meetings. Although our Red Cross blood drive will be hosted at the church on May 15th. If you would like to make an appointment, please call Jonna Iser directly. We are receiving our Mother's Day offering, which will be uh, given to uh, Cradle of Hope, which is a local ministry for single mothers and their children that provides housing and other support services. You can make your offering as a portion of your regular offering or a special offering uh, made out to the church, and we will forward that to Cradle of Hope. And of course, you can also designate an offering online. Today, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper. So I invite you to have something to eat and drink with you uh, so that you can partake at that portion of the service. And parents, your children are welcome to the Lord's table. You may want to say something to them before they partake about how much God loves them and how this meal is a way to celebrate God's love for all of us. Today's flowers were dedicated to the glory of God by the Derm of Sessian family in honor of granddaughter Sarah's birthday, and by Bill and Valerie Keeble in honor of their grandson, Michael Keeble. We thank our liturgists today. There are many. We thank Carol, Linda, Jenny, Vicki, Al, Joan, Carl, Walt, Keith, Luke, Zach, Hannah, and Zach. And also, we give thanks to God for our musicians, Kathy Worth Balkus on organ and piano, Frank Balkus on flute, and our director of music, Dave Sathra, on recorder. We continue to pray for Nancy's mother, Marjorie, and her caregivers and fellow residents at Masonic Village. We also pray for Mary Ludick, who has entered under um, home hospice and is being cared for by her son David and daughter Linda. We pray for all of them as they um, care for their mother. Let us now turn our hearts to God with the morning prelude. <laughs>
Jesus is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. He seeks out the lost and guides them into the fold. He feeds us and we are satisfied. He heals us and makes us whole. Let us listen to the voice of the shepherd and follow him. Our worship continues with our opening hymn. the Lord who made heaven and earth. In times of trouble, he is our steadfast hope. As we prepare for our worship, let us join in prayer. God of power and might, wisdom and truth, guide us by your Holy Spirit as we worship you today. That our thoughts and our actions may be holy in your sight and for your glory. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts, where Luke talks about the close-knit early Christian community. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were saved. Today's Psalter reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long.
gospel lesson is from John, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now my guess is that if you are an internet user, You've been spending a lot more time online these past few weeks than you ever have before. So I'm sure those of you who fall into that category are familiar with those eye-catching links to articles or advertisements that promise to tell you all you need to know about something by breaking the topic down into five to seven or 10 points or steps, such as 10 ways to lose 10 pounds or five vacation destinations a family of four can afford. But in most cases, once you open the link, you find that there's not much there that you didn't already know. And a lot of websites for Christian ministries are no different. There's usually a book or a Bible study or a curriculum that's being promoted behind those attention-grabbing titles, such as Seven Ways to Raise New Leaders in the Church or The Six Things That Every Church Should Do to Grow. And it's during times such as now when there is a surplus of these lists just this past week alone i saw these titles four tips on preaching virtually and six ways to shepherd when you can't see the sheep now i didn't open these links because most of the time when i do there's really nothing new about how to be the church it's just variations of what already has been told to us through scripture. In fact, the lesson that Keith read today from the second chapter of the book of Acts tells us all we need to know in order to be the church. The text takes us all the way back to the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit is poured out into the hearts of the disciples. And as Keith says, the church gathers as a very close knit community for the first time. And what they do together could read like this, the five essentials of being a spirit filled church. One, a spirit filled church is devoted to learning. Two, a spirit filled church has strong fellowship among its members. Three, a spirit-filled church includes breaking bread together with glad 
and generous hearts for a spirit-filled church praise together, and five, a spirit-filled church shares its abundance wherever there is need. So there you have it. Wherever and whenever these five activities are taking place, there you will find the church. And of course, these five essentials all have one foundation to hold them up, and that's the presence of the risen Christ through his spirit. So to give some context as to why we are hearing today's scripture lessons, we are now at the fourth of Sunday Sundays of the season of Easter. And the Easter season stretches from the day of resurrection to the day of Pentecost. So we are about halfway there now. And this is the point in the journey when the scripture lessons shift from telling us about the day of resurrection to inviting us to reflect on what it means and what it looks like to be a resurrection people, to be a spirit-filled church. And the fourth Sunday of Easter is often called Good Shepherd Sunday because it always features the 23rd Psalm and it always features a reading from the 10th chapter of John's Gospel where Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd of God's people. So today's scripture reminds us who we are as the church because whenever the Old Testament refers to God's people as sheep, it's not meant to be flattering. In fact, most biblical references to sheep tell us that just like sheep, we are helpless without God's guidance and protection. Now, the 23rd Psalm is a beautiful description of God's care and nurture for the individual believer. But it also reflects the faith community's complete dependence on the Lord's presence for its identity and for its purpose. And without his guidance, we will behave just like sheep without a shepherd. We won't stick together. We won't be able to find the nourishment we need. We'll scatter and flee at the slightest sign of a threat and eventually we will go astray and we'll get lost. The flock needs the shepherd or it will perish. The good shepherd gathers us close together for protection and for nurture. But in today's passage from John, Jesus tells us not only is he the shepherd, but he's the gate to the sheepfold as well. Now, I did a little online research of what an ancient sheepfold looks like. And several sources say that they were circular structures made of stones with bundles of thorn branches along the top to keep thieves away. And with a gate for entry and exit. In other words, sheep folds look like small fortresses, which is an interesting image for the church. There is a time for the gate to enclose us. We need a boundary between us and the world in order to maintain our identity. The boundary is there to remind us that the world itself cannot nourish us. And the boundary is there to strengthen our sense of community. The boundary is there to shut out any noise that distracts us from the sound of our shepherd's voice. And that is what the sheepfold is for. But the presence of the gate means that the sheepfold isn't our only home. Gates are there to open up 
as well as to hold us in. So when the Good Shepherd gathers us in to learn, to pray, to break bread, to strengthen our fellowship, and to be generous to those in need, we do these five things, not just for the sake of making the church strong and vibrant, but for making an impact on the world for the sake of the gospel. When other we gather to listen for the voice of our shepherd, we discover that abundant life isn't found only within the sheepfold, but also beyond the open gate to wherever our shepherd leads us. Now, like you, I am grieving for the sheepfold. I miss that feeling of being held close together into a tight knit community whenever we worship together in person. Preaching to a computer camera from a corner in my bedroom is not what God called me to do with my life. And I'm sure that you did not intend to live out your faith and to use your gifts without the fellowship of other disciples. It truly feels right now as though we are scattered sheep. And we long for that gate to close us back in together. That's why today is the perfect time to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and to remember his promise to hold us together through his spirit, whether we are together or separated. I, for one, am thankful for the creative and innovative ways your leaders are connecting us to each other during this time of isolation. And we pray for that time when we can enter into the sanctuary again in praise and thanksgiving. But until that day comes, we are still his church. We are still that tight knit community, devoting ourselves to learning, to fellowship, to praying, to sharing our gifts with those in need and to breaking bread together. So whenever and however we do these five things, we are at home together with our Good Shepherd. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. 
They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in God's kingdom. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for your love, bringing order out of chaos, breathing life into dust, leading captives into freedom, calling wandering children home, giving bread to the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, and raising the dead to life. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, the light of the world, the living water, our good shepherd, the way and the truth and the life, our risen Lord. Remembering all your gracious acts, we take these gifts of bread and wine and celebrate the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. And we offer our lives to you in service and praise as we keep the feast he prepares, bread of heaven, cup of salvation, true vine, resurrection, and life. We remember before you those for whom we are praying, for Mary and her children David and Linda as they care for her at home, for Marjorie and her fellow residents at Masonic Village, for our healthcare workers and first responders, and for the families in our church who still are grieving the death of loved ones, Dee and Jim, Carol, Charlene, and Carol and her family. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon this bread, upon this cup, and upon your people. Make us one in the body and blood, one with Christ, one in mission, one in ministry in this place and in every place, in this world and in the world to come, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We now boldly pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The bread of life, take and eat. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. The cup of salvation, drink of all, all of you. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
we remember the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. Let us pray. Through this holy meal, O oh God, you have given yourself to us. Now we give ourselves to you and to others. You have raised us with Christ and made us a new people. And as people of the resurrection, we will serve you with joy. Your glory has filled our hearts. Help us to glorify you in all things. Amen. Go now in peace. May God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit guide, keep, and protect you this day and forever. Amen. Jesus came that we may have life and have it abundantly. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm.